Welcome, welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration Series. In the Bionicle storyline, love may not be canon, but our love for Bionicle sure is canon. So, that's what we're going to talk about today, is Bionicle. And speaking of canon things, we're going to talk about some canon Bionicle characters. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's a lovely little place called the Bionicle Wiki, or Biosector, depending on the website you go to. And it's a lovely little place where you can read up on all the lore and storytelling behind the different characters for Bionicle, which there is a very rich, very long Bionicle story, and a whole bunch of different characters that were not made into sets that you can love and enjoy. And if you read up on them, well, there's some fascinating, really cool characters. So I wanted to cover those specific characters today, characters that you could go on the Bionicle wiki right now, read up about, learn lots about, and you could make your own version of them. Some of them don't even have images to go with them, so you could be the person that finally gives us a visual for this character. And then some of them do have visuals, but uh, they're not actually a physical mock, they're more of a drawing or other different things, so there's a lot that you can uh, get inspired by from these sorts of things. And hey, sometimes a good story, reading up on a fun, cool thing, can also be a, a good impetus for a build. So let's start reading over this stuff here and see what we learn and see if we can find some cool characters that can inspire you. So the first character today is Karzani. So technically Karzani was actually a uh, official Lego set, however he had a fairly different form. Uh, this was his more sort of like underwater form if I remember that correctly. Uh, he did have this image which was his, it's kind of his main uh, look. I believe this is from a uh, Bionicle comic, I'm not 100% sure on that, but still this is kind of the main uh, official kind of look of Karzani. So what I'm going to do for each of the characters that I cover today, I'm going to read a little bit from the Bionicle wiki just to just so you kind of get an idea of who this character, who all these characters are, uh, and then I'll show you some mocks that are interpretations of these characters, and we can talk about how that could inspire you. So let's read up on Karzani. Karzani was the ruler of a land named in his honor, and his brother was called Akata. Kazani and his brother Akata were two of the very first creations of the great beings, and each was given a domain to rule over. Kazani and Akata once fought over the Mask of Creation, which Akata won. Spoilers. Over time, his and Akata's realms passed into legend, with the myths saying that bad or lazy Matoran were sent to him, not for repair, but for punishment. Kazani later became just a term the Matoran used to scare each other. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> the idea that Kazani is not like a swear word, <laughs> but you know, you could just be like, hey, if you keep misbehaving, I'm going to send you to Kazani. And people be like, oh, no, not Kazani. That's fun. That's really cool. Um, but also, he, of course, he has a far more rich backstory than that. I'm just reading a, a little, little couple snippets there from the wiki, but he is a really cool character. So let's take a look at this version of Kazani, which was a submitted mock by... Sean Matthews. And this, of course, is called Kazani, which I'm sure you knew by now. So this is a very cool interpretation of Kazani, which matches that image I showed you before, which was that sort of more comic interpretation of him, which is uh, has a very distinct look, you know, specifically with that mask design there. It's very, very unique, very different, big horns, almost this sort of mishmash, like, stitched together mask. It's, I don't know, it's creepy, but it's cool. Uh, it's unique, you know? But one thing I really like about this mock here is the fact that he has gone a lot more ham on kind of painting pieces and customizing pieces. Of course, this is a custom mask here that he has made, I assume, made himself, or maybe he got a friend to make it. I don't know, there wasn't a description on this email. But he's painted these pieces here. So there's a few pieces in dark green here, which do not come in dark green, but they actually look quite nice in dark green. I'm specifically talking about those uh, Cardus Dragon shoulder pieces there in dark green. They are... Uh, they actually look quite cool. Using those as uh, shoulders there, I think, is uh, just a really nice design. Makes for a very kind of broad-shouldered look that uh, makes him look quite menacing and strong and sturdy, uh, which I think fits the character fairly well there, so I like that. Uh, but in terms of painting pieces, the majority of these sort of purple, kind of violet, lavender pieces are on this mock here. These pieces are all painted. They don't exist in that color. And in fact, that specific shade of kind of lavender violet there to my knowledge, is not even an official colour. It's just sort of slightly off of uh, official kind of lavender pieces and stuff. I imagine that's just the sort of paint that he had, and so he used that specific colour just because, well, it worked. And it also kind of fits the source material too, which is, you know, hey, that works. 
So, of course, a lot of these canon characters can have very distinct or unique interpretations. And like this, where the main source material is a drawing and not an official build, in order to be super, 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 super accurate, you really do have to go custom. So, hey, that can be an alternative or a path that you want to follow. But, hey, a lot of people don't like painting or cutting pieces and all that sort of stuff or customizing pieces. They like to stick to the official Lego pieces. But when you get a really cool result like this, well... Maybe it's worth considering, but, you know, of course, stick to what you want to do. I don't want to force you down a path you don't want to go down. But I really, really do like these uh, these combination of colors here, this beautiful rich lavender up against this uh, very dark green here. Uh, works quite well, you know. The colors complement each other very nicely. So, hey, if you do want to cut and color your pieces a little bit, pick a color scheme like this that works really, really well and fits the source material because, uh, well, it's a very pretty thing. I also like to, the source material had it, this weird disc around his belt. It almost looks like he's won some sort of wrestling competition and he has a big wrestling kind of belt trophy thing. Uh, but I also just think it's a kind of nice looking design. It just, it, I don't know, just, it just looks cool. You know, sometimes you don't need a big explanation for why something looks cool. It just does. And I like that. So hey, this Kazani revamp, or not really, a, well, it's kind of, eh, from a certain point of view, it's a revamp, but it's uh, an interpretation of a, of a drawn image. This is a really cool customized mock. It's an awesome version of Karzani. So let's move to the next character and the next mock. So we spoke about him before. You know him. You love him. It's Akata. So Akata doesn't actually have an official image. Otherwise, I'd probably be showing you that right now. Um, but that's some of the fun of this. There's a lot of different characters out there that never had an image. And some of them can be very important characters Kind of like this guy. Uh, but there are a few fun things about Akata that you can make uh, well, more easily these days. And we'll get to that in a second here. But let us read the story, shall we? Akata is a powerful being from the Matoran universe. He is the... It says this in, for some reason in uh, inverted commas. He is the brother of Karzani and the ruler of the island realm of Akata, named after him. While Karzani lived in a place where Matoran was sent to be repaired... Akata chose to govern a place of light where Matoran could work in peace and comfort. What a good guy. During this time, Akata acted as an engineer, creating various objects for anyone who asked, including weapons for the Order of Matanui. Among his other creations, Akata created the Toa Mata, as well as the Exeliar T9, the Jetrax T6, and the Rocco T3, and placed the three vehicles inside the Codex in Kratanui. So your boy... Akata made your other boys the Toamata, and he all made those cool vehicle things that were official sets. That's pretty cool. All the fun things you can learn when you read the Bionicle Wiki, where you learn about the creations of some of your favorite characters and the dudes who made them, and how those dudes came to be. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool indeed. So that is your boy Akata. Fun thing about Akata, we read about it before, they fought over the Mask of Creation. And Akata won that Mask of Creation. And for the longest time, we didn't have an official Mask of Creation piece. And then Bionicle G2 came about. And now we do have an official version of that piece. That's pretty cool. Uh, so, with that in mind, let us move over to a mock by Connor Hoffman, which is called Akata. I don't even need to say what these mocks are called. You'll know by the time I finish the stories. But hey, Akata. And it uses that Mask of Creation piece because, hey, he had that. He wore that. So that's pretty cool, you know? So if you want to build a Carter and you have Akimu's mask, well, you can, because uh, in Barnacle G1, Akimu didn't exist. Akimu was kind of Matanui. And, you know, the guy who wore that mask was this guy. So that's pretty cool. Good way to use that mask and use it well. So let's talk about this version of Connor Mahoffman's Akata. He has made another one. I'll get to that in a hot minute. But this one's pretty cool too. I wanted to talk about this one because it uses that mask. So hey, you know? Good way to put that mask to good use. So that mask is gold. There's a lot of gold on this mark here. And there's also a nice amount of green on this mark as well. And I like that a lot because, hey, green and gold like that, they work pretty well together, actually. I really do like that. So very nice color combination there. He also has a pretty cool sword here, Akata. And you know what's cool about that sword? Is it actually splits into two smaller swords. Well, it's also really nice. I like that a lot. So, hey, really fun weapon design there, something that you could more or less fairly easily do yourself, just having it so that they kind of split off in that fashion. It's pretty cool. I also like to kind of get a back view of Okata here. Uh, he has these larger claw pieces there as kind of like gauntlets on his, um, on his arms there. I don't know. I really like that. There's something kind of regal and powerful about that, and, you know, I think that fits the character well. 
and uh, it just looks nice. It just looks nice, you know? Another kind of small detail I really like about this is the inclusion of the, like, chain and a few other nice details in front of and behind the Mask of Creation. I don't know, it, it, like, naturally that Mask of Creation piece kind of has those horns kind of protruding out of it that makes it look like it's kind of got a crown of sorts. And so I like the fact that the chain and a few other little details really expand upon that crown idea and make it look even more, I don't know, like, rich and um, wealthy and it makes him look more sort of prominent and regal. It's cool. It's really cool. It's a little subtle thing, but I think it goes a long way and works really well. So this is this more sort of smaller simplified version of Okata, which again, fantastic mock. But let's move into a more modern version of Okata that Connor Hoffman has made here. I believe it was for a contest. The contest, I believe, is over now, and I think this actually won, so congrats. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not so super familiar with that, but hey, he built a cool mock. Maybe that's all that matters. Maybe not. Congrats if you won. Uh, but hey, here's this other version of a Carter that Connor Hoffman made. It's really cool. So this one uses a custom mask, which is very reminiscent of Akimu's mask here, but a little bit different and in a different color as well. Uh, and speaking of a different color, this mock has an entirely different color scheme to the last one. Still uses green, but this time it's sand green. And it's used in conjunction with the beautiful gunmetal color, which I, I'm going to be honest, I find that hard to use that color. I don't know, I just don't like it. But uh, I don't like it when I use it. When I see other people use it, they always use it really well. But hey, personal preference, I'm not a big fan of that colour when I build with it. But it works so well here in sand green, uh, up against the sand green rather. Um, beautiful, beautiful colour scheme. Really does make me start to like that colour a little bit more. Uh, so yes, fantastic. Uh, it's what I love about this version of a Akata that Connor Hoffman has made here is that he looks so like godlike and... Uh, I said regal before. This one's a sort of different take on being a little bit more king-like in nature. I don't know. He just looks powerful. You don't want to mess with this guy. He looks... He he just looks super strong. I mean, hey, he made the Toamata. He made all these cool things that were very important to the larger history of Bionicle. So uh, he's, of course, a big, strong, important character, you know? So uh, why not build a, a, a version of the character that can represent that, you know? So I think that's awesome. I really do. Uh, I love, to this larger kind of hammer he has. You know, we spoke about how he makes stuff. It makes sense that he would have this sort of hammer that you could see a blacksmith using of sorts. Really nicely made using some of those... Um, uh, if you remember Pahatu Fantoka, he had those uh, spinning kind of rotor weapon pieces. Uh, the pieces for those... Uh, also appeared on Takanuva Mystica's upper legs. Uh, those pieces there are being used to kind of form the uh, the main sort of bit of the hammer there, which looks really, really nice. Really great way of creating a kind of larger hammer of, uh, of that ilk. Looks cool. Another thing I think also looks really cool is the foot design on this mock. It uses some of the kind of larger foot pieces that came on some of the Hero Factory XL characters. And I love what Connor's done here by, like, really seriously buffing them out a whole bunch more. Adding some system pieces on them, uh, putting some arm connector pieces and stuff, and just, yeah, really kind of padding it out even more so that it, it kind of fits with the larger aesthetic of this mock and just looks cooler, really. Um, honestly, I, I think that's awesome. I think it's really, really cool. It's just a great idea to take an already existing really cool piece and add even more to it so that it fits the larger aesthetic of what you're building. I think that's just uh, a great idea, and this is, it's, it's turned out really well. Uh, the final thing I really like about this, well, it's kind of two things, actually. It's not quite the final thing. Uh, I love the shoulder design on this, using those drill dozer masks there, uh, or the Fire Lord masks, I suppose, as well. It's the same mask, different color. Um, but yeah, using them as shoulders there works really well. It's a really nice-looking shoulder design. Masks always work for shoulders. It's just a, it's just a fact, you know? I love it. And I also love the torso design here, using those Ben 10 pieces in uh, sand green there, kind of overlapping them over the top of that uh, larger kind of gunmetal, almost sort of shield element. Just looks really nice, the combination of those two pieces kind of flowing one into the other there. Just looks cool. Looks really cool. So a fantastic job on a fantastic version of Akata here. Brilliant work. Love your work. Next character. This one is, uh, well, it's more of a Rahi. You know, it's still a character, though. It's still a sentient living creature. This one is called Tartorak. So, what are we going to learn about Tartorak today? Well, let me read straight from the wiki. Tartorak were massive, 40-foot-tall, bipedal, dinosaur-like Rahi with the ability to speak Matoran. They were native to both the island of Kitongu species and to the Zazaks. I don't know what a Zazak is, but hey, you can read that up if you'd like. Or a Zak... Z-A-K-A-Z. Zazak? 
I don't know how to pronounce that. Tartaric were used as steeds for Kutungu species, and also for the Skakti, the Skakti being the Paraka, or the species of the Paraka, although many Tartaric turned on their riders. So that again is pretty cool. Imagine meeting a dinosaur, and then being like, I'm gonna use this as a horse, and then riding it into battle, and sometimes they're like, get off my back, I don't want this, <laughs> leave me alone. Uh, but also, you meet these dinosaurs, and you're like, Hey boy, how are you? And you expect it to just roar in your face, and then it's just like, Oh well, hello. My name's Tutorak. Lovely to meet you. And you're like, Oh my god, you speak, you speak my language. It'd be kind of creepy, but also kind of cool. And hey, these guys are pretty cool. So uh, if you bought the old, um, I don't know, there was some older binocle books that I had as a as a wee lad. There was a, the Dark Hunter book, and then I think there was like a Beast and Rahi kind of book. I remember these were in it, and these are one of my favorite little creatures. Not really little. It's forty foot tall, as we learnt. Uh, but one of my favorite uh, uh, mocks or characters that were in that book, you know. Uh, so just this is kind of a long-standing character. They've got some good emotional attachment to it. I really do, really do like this design. But the original design here is very sort of, I don't know, in some of the pictures it looks very large, menacing, and, and buffed and bulked out. But when you actually take a look at the character itself, the uh, official uh, model for, this, uh, for this, this character here, this Rahi, it's a little bit more sort of slimmed down, a little bit more gappy, which is fine. It is what it is. But, you know, you could always uh, find new ways of, of giving this life, you know. There are some of those older characters that do have official uh, versions of them. Often they were mocks created by fans for contests. Uh, and this is one of those, to my knowledge. And, um, you know, they're a little bit more outdated, some of those mocks. They use pieces uh, from you know, like 2001, 2002, when those were really the only barnacle pieces. They were built in those years. So they had a little bit more of a limited parts range to choose from, which is fine. But, you know, now these days when we've got a whole massive amount of pieces that we could use, is it worth revisiting some of these uh, different designs, you know? There's a whole bunch of them you can look through, specifically the Dark Hunters, specifically some Rahi. So hey, do your research, look up some of those official models, and maybe you want to tweak them yourself. If you look hard enough on the internet, there are instructions for them too, so uh, give that a Google. It shouldn't be too hard to find. Anyway though, let's take a look at a mock version of Tartorak. This one's by Sparkytron, and this is a G2 CCBS version of Tartorak, which I love. I love that idea. The idea of, uh, well, just with any Bionicle character from the original generation of Bionicle, if you can reimagine it just using CCBS pieces, what a fun and exciting challenge. And hey, as we see here, it looks really cool. It looks really cool. I love just this redesigned face for the Totorak here using uh, some foot pieces and some Hero Factory shells and some other claw pieces like that in, uh, in and, and having them shaped in a manner that resembles the uh, original face there. It just looks so cool. It's so reminiscent of the original, but also so new and different. I don't know, it looks a little bit more lizard-like where the other one looked a lot more kind of dragon-like. But I think that's uh, definitely a pro uh, here. I, I really, really like how it looks. And um, it looks more kind of buffed out and more... Uh, realistic, I suppose. You know, you, you take a look at the rest of the body here. It's more sort of sturdy, strong. There's not really any gaps in the design. It's all armoured up and uh, just looks menacing, you know? And and I think that really works in the favour of this, uh, this, this character, the Totorak here, because it is meant to be a sort of more menacing dinosaur-like creature, you know? Um, the fact that it was a little bit more gappy before eh, makes it look a little less intimidating. Again, nothing wrong with it being a little bit more gappy, but... Like we said, if you want to revisit it in these times, maybe it's worth filling in some of those gaps, you know? And I think this is a great example of how how good that can look, you know? I love, too, like, the foot design on this mark, how it's uh, it's taking notes from the original Totorak, how it did have those sort of uh, three-footed, three-toed kind of look there, uh, and that's being uh, recreated here, but uh, in a different way. So it's it's nice to see him paying homage to the original, but uh, reimagining it with newer pieces and a, and a slightly newer, updated look. But yeah, honestly, I think this is just a fantastic uh, reimagining of it. I love its little tongue as well, by the way. Just using a, a hand connector piece there to act as the tongue. That's a great idea. Um, but it's awesome. Really cool to see CCBS being used to reimagine an older G1 classic character. So it's cool. It's really cool. Let's move on to one of my personal favorite uh, canon characters that did not make it as a set, but almost did. Uh, this is the Bateria. So the Bateria. What are the Bateria, you ask? Well... I have prepared a little speech. Well, not a speech, I'm just reading from the wiki. And the wiki says, The Bateria are a group of violent, shape-shifting robots created by the Great Beings. The Great Beings, unable to stop the core war on Spirus Magna by peaceful means, 
created the Bateria as elite assassins and tasked them with killing all armed combatants. The Bateria are entirely mechanical, programmed to instinctively target and kill all beings carrying weaponry, and they do not attack anyone who is unarmed. Bateria have the ability to shapeshift like liquid metal and completely alter their appearance. They do not shapeshift to resemble specific individuals, as the Bateria are designed to ambush rather than to spy. Rather, they are often using their power to camouflage themselves. I don't know, I, I've just, reading the wiki when I was a wee lad and then rereading it again now, I've always thought that was just a really cool concept, you know? The idea that they're this sort of like, I remember the wiki was almost described them as a little more kind of virus-like when it goes into a bit more detail, like they were this sort of plague on uh, Spiris Magna or Barra Magna or wherever it was, I forget. And um, I, I just really liked it, I thought it was a really interesting idea, and the fact that they're like, they're just programmed to attack anyone that's holding a weapon. But if you just drop your weapon, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I don't want to fight you anymore. I just thought it was really cool. It was just a really fun little thing. I can imagine that being in some movie or TV show where it's like, we can't take them. How are we going to stop them? And then some guy gets his weapon knocked out of his hand. It's like, well, they've stopped attacking me. What do I do now? And then he's like, wait, everyone, drop your weapons. And then the fight ends and it's like, ah, we're thinking, we're being creative. It's cool. It's really cool. So yeah, I just really liked the concept of these characters and I love the little bit of trivia I believe there's the is the trivia here on the website. It is not, but I just I don't know. I remember reading somewhere that these were going to be in like the next wave of Bionicle sets, and then Bionicle finished up, and it was like eh, I guess not. You know, I don't know. I just always thought it was cool. Just really thought it was cool indeed. But hey, you know, they didn't make it as sets, but we can dream and we can make them as mocks now. And speaking of making a Bateria as a mock now, here's a mock by Lewis Hammond, and it's a Bateria. This is cool. This is really cool. The mask here is, of course, a 3D printed mask element that very much resembles the source material, which you would have seen before as I was speaking. And um, I, I like that this is a little bit more sort of simple in construction, and, and that, that by no means makes it bad. I love that it's simple in construction because, like I said, I always dreamed about Bateria being sets because apparently they were going to be. That could just be a rumor, but I, I remember reading that somewhere. And the fact that this is a little bit more simple, I don't know. The way I look at this, I go, that could have been what the set looked like, you know? And I always think it's a fun little challenge too, you know? It's one thing to build a a, uh, a mock and be like, this could be a set. But then when you think about it, you go like, oh, Lego sets have to fit into a specific price range, and in order for them to fit into a price range, they need to have a set number of pieces so that, you know, you're not paying for more pieces than you should be, you know? And so, you know, sometimes your mocks, if they were to be made into a set, Lego would probably have to reimagine them with less or more pieces. Or... They need to reimagine the set so that it could pose well and be played with because that it is a toy at the end of the day and kids have got to play with it, you know? So looking at this, I go, hey, it kind of, you know, it's it's designed fairly similarly to a, to a set using more sort of prefab elements and stuff. And I go, you know, it looks like it could be, could be played with fairly well. It looks like it poses well, doesn't use too many pieces. I think this could easily fit as a set. And in my opinion, that's just a fun little challenge you can give yourself of just like, hey, I'm going to build a set, but I have to limit it to a, a set number of pieces, and I have to make sure it's super posable so it could be played with, you know? Could just be a really fun, unique challenge, you know? Something to consider, at least. But anyway, let's talk a bit more about this materia, because I do love it indeed. I love this color scheme. Dark blue and white, you know? Again, it's a bit more fitting to the source material there, but just seeing it all put together here on an official mock of it, it looks really cool. It looks really, really cool. I love, too, using those Elec claws there. They fit, uh, fit the design very well. Just looks super cool. And uh, overall, I don't know. I just like Bateria, guys. It's really, really cool. It's really nice. Might have to go onto one of those uh, Shapeways websites and purchase myself one of those Bateria masks. It'd be a really fun thing to build. I just like Bateria. I just, I'm getting ideas, guys. It's all right. It's okay. It's cool. I like Bateria. Good job, Lewis. You've done a great job. And you, you're making me want to build one. So it's, it's an even better job. I love your work. So the next and final character in this episode. This character is called Chayara. Chayara. Let us read up on Chayara here. I've got my little little description here all written up and ready to go. Chayara is a Toa of Lightning, chosen to participate in a mission to seek out the great beings. Chayara was once a Vomatoran, and eventually transformed into a Toa, though she travelled alone. As a Toa of Lightning, Chayara possesses the ability to create, control, and absorb electrical energy, as well as projecting images made out of lightning. That's Chayara. So Chayara is pretty cool. Chayara is pretty cool. Again, she's another character that doesn't have an official description, uh, sorry, an official image of what she looks like, so it's completely up to you of how she could look. But there are some things we can learn from her. So, Chayara is a Toa of Lightning, as we just learnt there. Now, Toa of Lightning, 
uh, unless I'm forgetting it, I don't think so. There was never an official Tower of Lightning, you know? You always had your sort of main kind of six elements, you know? Your, your wind, your, your, your fire, your ice, your water, your stone, your earth, all that sort of stuff. And uh, you're like, well, that's kind of where the elements ended, right? Wrong. If you read up on the Barnacle Wiki, there were a few more elements, like lightning being one of them. Uh, I believe there were some others like plasma. Let me, let, me, let me get it up now. Let me see what we can learn here. So, uh, uh, I'm going to have to pause the episode. Let me get them all up. I'm, I'm curious now. Let's read up on all the different elements that didn't, didn't appear in official sets, but you could explore now. Okay, so some of the other elements are including, but not limited to, lightning, like we spoke about before, magnetism, plasma, gravity, sonics, the green. What the heck is the green? I don't have to look into that. Uh, there's also a tower of iron, or uh, iron matorum, uh, psychonics, uh, heat, vacuum, telekinesis, telepathy. Uh, some of these are also including uh, powers that some of the Rakshi had, and the Rakshi kind of exclusively had those powers, and the Toa didn't. But hey, there's a whole bunch of other different canon elements that Toa could uh, have. So if you want to explore some of those, head over to the Bionicle Wiki and look some of that stuff up, because it's fun. I remember as a kid just drooling over reading some of that. Uh, let's read what the heck the green is as an element. Oh, it's jungle. All right, well, yeah. Why'd you call it the green? It's the jungle, not the green. All right, well. Uh, jungle is an elemental power to, in, uh, to, is an elemental power, full stop. To inhabitants of the Matoran universe, it is both plant life or the green. Okay, I guess it's just what people call it in the universe. They're like, ah, I control the green! Alright. Does that mean if there's, like, an artist Matoran and they're just, like, colouring something in, they're like, I'm a tower of plant life, I can colour in with green. I control the green. <laughs> nah, that wasn't my best joke. Anyway. Yeah, so this is, uh, Ch uh Ch is it Chiara? Am I pronouncing? Have I forgotten? I just said it a minute ago. Chiara. Chiara, if you will. She's pretty cool. She's a Toa of Lightning, formerly a Lightning Matoran. Uh, and that's pretty cool. But you know what's cooler about that? All those different elements have canon color schemes as well. For example, a Toa of Lightning is, well, you guessed it, white and dark blue, or just blue at least. So. Look that sort of stuff up. Check out what the color scheme of a Tower of Plasma is, which I believe was white and orange. No, yes, white and orange, I think. I can double check that, but no, you can double check that. Figure it out. Head over to the wiki. See what's where. Um, but yeah, it's cool. It's a great idea, you know? If you want to play around with some more unique elements for the Tower that you might create, there are some unique elements, and there are color schemes for those elements too. You just got to research some of them. Research is always an important part of a good creative process there, my boys and girls. So hey, give it a go. Give it a go indeed. Anyway, Chara, let's talk about this mock, because it's pretty cool. I didn't even speak about the mock yet. How could you have guessed it? Well, I've probably been showing it to you, haven't I? Well, this mock is by Bob the Doctor 27 and is called Chiara. Yes. Apologies that it took me so long to say that name. Anyway, Chiara, here it is. Here's an interpretation of the character. There wasn't an official image. Bye. So this Chiara has Wolverine claws. I can just end the episode there, because, man, it's got Wolverine claws. That's cool as heck. You can't top that. It's great. Great idea. Use some of those minifigure sword pieces, put them on your mock, and they got Wolverine claws, and they're awesome. Or I guess they're X-23 claws, because they're two-clawed and not three-clawed. But you know what? It's fine. It's fine. Who cares? It's cool. It looks cool. Uh, I also love about this mock the fact that it has a blue version of Nuparu's mask, or Nuparu uh, Mari's mask. You know, it reminds me of the good old days, when we would have construction sets all over the shelves. They were everywhere. No, no matter where you went, you saw a bionicle set. You'd be walking down the street, some guy would come up to you and he'd give you a barnacle set. That never happened. And that maybe it happened to you. If, if so, that's, that's pretty cool. But they were more common, of course. Construction was a theme that was alive and thriving. I remember the joy of when a new wave would come out and you'd be like, Oh, new masks. Awesome. There's something so inspiring about a new barnacle mask, at least to me, you know? Or a mask would come out in a different colour, you know? Like the original Kazani set had a few characters that had different coloured masks. When it was mask in dark blue, you know? A few other different things there. But hey... A recolored piece, a recolored mask, a brand new mask. It can always be exciting, at least in my opinion. Maybe you feel the same. And seeing this mask here in dark blue, I go, oh, that's cool, you know? And it could be as simple as you grab a, a few paints yourself, you paint a mask, you ask someone to paint a mask, you commission an artist to paint a mask for you, you go over to Shapeways, you buy a brand new mask, you go over to Mold It Masks, they paint a mask for you, whatever, you know? It's just fun. It can be a really good impetus for a mark, you know, just to, to do that, to get a brand new colored mask, brand new mask. Who knows what it might inspire? And so, I don't know, just looking at it here, it reminds me of those good old days where you'd, you'd see a new mask and you go, oh, I want to use that in something, you know? So I like that. So, you know, if, you, if you're someone who likes painting pieces, paint a mask. It might uh, 
It might inspire you a little. Or it might not. I don't know. I don't know how you work. You've got to find that out yourself. Yeah. See if it inspires you. Why not? Anyway, this is a really cool mark. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter for a Toa. But hey, Luke Skywalker was a little short for a Stormtrooper, and he still got a lot done. So that's cool. That's fine. You know? They're a little shorter. That's okay. It works. But I really like this mark. It's really cool. Really cool how it does dip into some elements of canon as well. That's awesome. So there you go. That's it for this episode of the Barnacle Inspiration series. I hope you did enjoy today. That's all. If you want to see some of your own mocks on the show, the best way and the only way for them to appear on the show is for you to submit them to the submission email. Well, it's actually not the only way. I, could, I just randomly pick mocks as well. So if your mock gets randomly picked, huzzah. But if you want to increase your chances of being on, submit away. I always look through those submissions. Whenever I can put them into an episode or make an episode around a submission, I do my best to. And there are the fan-submitted episodes every 10th episode as well. So, hey, stay tuned. Your mock might be featured in the next episode or one of those fan-submitted episodes. All you got to do is submit uh, pictures, information, whatever you want to put in an email to that email, and you're good to go. The email is also in the description below, so if you want to copy and paste that, you can. And also in the description below are links to the mocks you saw in today's episode. So go on and check that out. I might also put a link to the Bionicle Wiki just in general there as well. So if you want to read up a bit about some characters, that's there for you to do. You know what? I might even put some of the links to the Bionicle Wiki pages for these characters in case you actually want to read further. Why not? I'll do that. Um, additionally, if you want to check out some of my social media, there's links to that in the description below as well. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much. Bye for now. See you next week.